The Pod Breed Network is strictly for the small podcasts that are up and coming in the vast world of podcasting. Pod Breed is made up of many diverse podcasts coming together to achieve the same goal of being the best damn podcast network on the planet. Find out more at podbreed.com. There are over 2 million podcasts, but how many of those can massage the mind, elevate the senses, take you to another plateau? Allow me to introduce you to Drea's Point of View, the 10 minute or less podcast that brings you observations and experiences from her perspective. So on the Peacock Network, there are so many documentaries to choose from as well as good TV shows. So if you don't have that, I suggest getting a trial period because it is one of the best streaming networks, I think. So I happened to see a docuseries, three-parter, about the Menendez brothers and Menudo. And if you remember, these boys shot their parents back in the late 80s. And it was about, uh, you know, everybody thought because they were rich, they were trying to get their money, and then they claimed that their dad abused them. But nobody believed them. And then the band Menudo played a part in it as well. I vaguely remember that, but I wanted to talk about this docuseries. Menendez and Menudo, Boys Betrayed. I am Drea, and I am the hostess of Drea's Point of View. Thanks so much for tuning in. You can follow me on Twitter at Drea Point and at Drea's Point of View on Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse, and Pinterest. Okay, so going back, it like I said, the case was in the late 80s. The parents were shot close range in their house. Uh, The kids, the boys were 18, Lyle and Eric were 18 and 21 at the time. So they weren't the guilty ones at first. Well, they they were guilty, but they weren't the suspects at first. And eventually, you know, they get arrested. And what I didn't know was that there were two trials So a year before the first trial, the DA presented evidence for murder for financial gain. The guys weren't indicted. Then the O.J. Simpson trial happened. And then, well, the first trial, the defense said there was abuse in the house. They called 56 defense witnesses. Then it went into a mistrial. The second trial was a year later, and the O.J. Simpson trial happened. And then uh, sexual abuse evidence was dismissed. Some witnesses weren't allowed. I don't remember. For, like I said, it was so long ago. I don't remember, and I'm really big on trials. I don't remember watching two trials, but I do remember bits and pieces. But the Menendez brothers have been in jail now for about 33 years. And there's this uh, guy, last name is Rand. He thought there were probably other victims of the dad, Jose Menendez, who was accused of abusing the boys. Uh, So he did his research and he found a personal assistant of Jose, talked about his obsession with the group Menudo. Like I said, I vaguely remember Menudo coming up and that's where the story really took a different turn. We learned about a lot about that group, uh, Menudo. And the auditions for that group were a weekend at the house. Most of the members actually were molested. The manager, Edgardo Diaz, was the one really who was very powerful in Puerto Rico. And he was the one who molested a lot of people. But only one person, an ex-member, Roy, 
he was the one who really spoke out about it. He joined at 13 and he was the only one who never auditioned. Apparently, uh, the manager saw him somewhere. He took pictures of him. He promised him a lot of money, a lavish life. And he showed up at his school a week later, uh, took him out of school, took him to his mother's house, took him to the manager's house. Okay, so his mom told him to be careful with him because she knew what was going on. So she was an enabler. And uh, later that night, he took him to his room and uh, molested him. And like I said, his mom was still in the house. So she knew what was going on. Um, Roy was, he was, like I said, he was promised that uh, he was going to be taken care of because he was living in poverty. He thought it would be a great opportunity. He uh, was told that, well, Edgardo was the master manipulator. He chose families who were in need, but Roy knew he had to help his family. So he had to think like an adult. So he, once he signed a contract, he knew he signed his life away and he's regretted it ever since. He talked about what happened on the tours. He shared a room with him and he was abused three to four times a week. His mom couldn't travel with him. He was depressed. He tried to kill himself multiple times. And eventually he got kicked out of the group after seeing Edgardo with someone else. He didn't tell his mom or anyone until he was an adult because he wanted to help the family out and he didn't want to jeopardize that. He got on drugs afterwards, but later he wound up finding God, got baptized and is now a missionary. He believes he was, his life was spared so he can tell his story. So it's really him being the key witness in the Menendez's uh, their future because like I said they've already been in jail for 33 years now there was another journalist who was involved and um, Neary I think her name was and she was talking about RCA records and that's when he mentioned Jose Menendez now he's not going to bring up a pedophile out of the blue and it took him two years to talk about him Jose was a president of RCA Records. So that was a lot for part one. And then part two uh, really talked about, they had relatives of the brothers talking about it. They never really thought anything was going on. They knew that Jose took, you know, would take the boy upstairs and keep him up there for a long time and then come out and say he's not going to make it down for dinner and how uh, he really wanted some lemons or a lot of ketchup because apparently that's what you take once you swallow a lot of sperm and he wanted to get that taste out of his mouth it was I mean it was, it was very the whole the whole series you is, is really uh, it was just it's very telling, very emotional, very, very graphic. Uh, one of the ex-members they showed, uh, Ray, I believe his name was, Ray Reyes. He reached out to other members because he wanted to come forward too. Uh, he admitted the abuse to his brother, who also wanted to be in the group. And he passed away, so, so they showed his funeral and Edgardo showing up to that. He talked to the media but not about what he was accused of. And um, so Roy talked about wanting to meet up with Lyle and Eric. And then there was part three, which was, uh, so apparently there was this talk show in Puerto Rico that a lot of the members went on. A lot of people went on there accusing um, Edgardo but nothing came out of it because no one filed charges uh, Roy talked about the first time that he actually met Jose on the way to a dinner in a limo and how he looked at him he saw both sons Lyle and Eric downstairs but he felt because you have a, you 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 feel a vibe in a room you you know the energy and he felt a uh, energy of abuse when he saw them he said it was it was very eerie 
Uh, he was offered wine, which made him feel tired. Next thing he knew, someone carried him and he walked down a hallway into a room. He woke up in a hotel, doesn't know how he got there. He was bleeding and he was bleeding profusely for a week and he was in pain. He showed Edgardo and uh, Edgardo pretty much blows the, brushed it off, told him that, you know, he'll be okay. And uh, he actually just wanted to really kill Edgardo. He wanted revenge. And he talked to previous members and those associated with the band for support. And then fast forward to 2022, he went to Los Angeles to file charges against Edgardo because that's where most of his abuse happened. No charges have been brought against him yet. Uh, Cliff Gardner, the attorney for the boys, said he was actually going to appeal their case based on his information. The brothers also want to talk to him, but a witness can't talk to a defendant. So it's, it's, it's going to be very interesting to get an update on this. And I definitely would like to share it with you whenever I get it. Case is still ongoing. It's very interesting. And it's just very interesting how evidence can be found so many years later. And uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely suggest checking this out if you're familiar with that case. It's on the Peacock Network. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future episodes. This has been Drea's Point of View. Thank you for listening to Drea's Point of View. Remember to subscribe to this female-hosted podcast. Drea's Point of View is now available on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays.